Okay, we are going to go ahead and get started. Um, my name is Ann Thompson, um, and I am a senior director within the company. And the purpose of today's call is just to kind of do a welcome to Scout and Seller and kind of go over some of the company basics. Um, uh, Shelly is um, one of the executive directors in our company, and she's just going to kind of go over some of the rules of uh, Scout and Seller and um, kind of up and running. And then, I'm sorry, my three year old. Um, and then um, Lisa Oldham is a director within the company, and she's going to go over how to recruit and really kind of how to build your team. And at the very end, um, I'm going to go over uh, compensation. We're going to kind of break that into two. We will have a basic compensation, and then at the very end, I'll go into advanced training, advanced compensation and training. So if you want to hop off, uh, when I get into the advanced part, you are more than welcome to hop off. But if you want to listen to the whole thing, you can listen. Um, so, Shelly, if you just want to go ahead and take it away. Okay. So thank you guys all for joining. I know we've got a whole lot of new consultants that have joined this month. It's probably been one of the biggest recruiting months we've ever had. And I know that we've got a lot of people that are just – craving for tools on how to grow their businesses and how we are doing that is through tastings. And so I just wanted to go over just quickly some of the basics of, of tastings and then also the rules of tastings and, and what we are legally allowed to do. Um, so real quick, uh, tastings. one thing I am noticing is that we're getting a lot of people that are signing up uh, level ones and they are not attending their, their newly recruits first. Thing. And I have to, to stress how important it is that once we sign somebody up, it is so important that we attend that first tasting with them. Um, I've used the analogy before, you guys have all heard this. We've signed them up for a marathon. Um, they bought their BDK kits, which is their, their running shoes. We need to go there, get their shoes out of their box, take them that first mile um, on this journey that, we're, that we are all on. So it's so important that you show them how a tasting is run. So attend their first tasting. If you are not in the same city as your recruit, there is plenty of opportunity. We've got so many consultants all over. Met one last night who her team's in Houston. And I said, get on your Facebook, uh, either family page, team team, whatever it is. Find somebody in the area. They don't want to be on your team that you can attend their tasting to at least to see um, how a tasting is run. Everyone's been so welcoming to allow people to come to observe a tasting. So again, it's very important that you, you really take that level one in the tools to be successful because signing them up and letting them go is not working. So we've got to make sure that we are following up. We are tagging them in videos. We are having, walking through the back cellar with them, get them acquainted with, uh, with their the start of their business. And um, when it comes to tastings, we have private versus public tastings. A private tasting is going to probably be more of a home-based setting. So you can invite people over to your home and bring them into your home to um, um, share bottles of wine with them. One thing that I am noticing that is a lot of people are opening too many bottles of wine for their tastings and we're trying to keep costs of tastings down. So be mindful of how many bottles you're opening and one bottle of wine could easily do 18 to 20 tastings if you use your scout and seller pour, if you put that in there. Um, you don't need to be opening 10 bottles. That's, it's going to be really hard for you to recoup, recoup your investment back on that. So anywhere from four to six bottles, that will get you a, a, a tasting set that gives the uh, consumer and your customer a great opportunity to try a variety of wines um, and make sure Sarah always says, make sure your, your wines are served to the right temperature. Make sure those reds are served at a temperature that's cool, 55 to 68 degrees. Um, don't serve it warm. It makes a big difference. Open them up 30, 45 minutes. Some of these wines are pretty inky and, and earthy and bold and they need to breathe and it makes a big difference. So open up your wines at least 30 to 45 minutes ahead of your party and keep them to temperature. When you are doing invites for your parties, this is one thing that Sarah has really noticed um, early on and has said that we need to uh, be careful and mindful of what we're doing. You cannot go onto your Facebook page and in your main feed, invite everybody that, that you know that's going to be on your Facebook page, all of your friends. They need to be private invites. Um, so you can use uh, paperless posts. You can use evites. You can even use... Um, through Messenger, you can create an event through Facebook and where you're actually tagging your people, but it cannot be showing up on your main feed. 
So let's just make sure that we're following that rule um, as far as not opening a door and just allowing anybody to walk in and join your party. So it needs to be an invite only. Now public tastings, that's another kind of another animal. Um, we do also need to make sure that they are invite only. If you're going to be hosting at a, like a yoga studio or some kind of place of business, it needs to be after hours. Um, you can't go into a boutique in the middle of the mall and set up shop and have a wine tasting for everybody who's walking through the mall to walk in and try your wine. Um, we are not allowed to do that. We're not licensed to be able to pour in public like that. So just things like that. Just be really mindful if you have any questions about whether or not you can, you know, uh, pour at a certain place, reach to your upline, they'll find you the answer. Um, when in doubt, just ask. You know, we all want to be make sure we're following the rules um, with that. So when it comes to your tastings, um, one thing we want to make sure is this is a business and we are being mindful of the posts that we put on our social media pages at our tastings. Um, we cannot be showing us getting out of control, um, drunken parties and that kind of stuff. So we have a unique product that, you know, we're not a skincare product or anything like that. We are alcohol and so we <laughs> need to keep it professional. So just be careful of what you're putting. I know some people were putting, um, posting pictures of them drinking their 14K in their car. I know some place it's legal and some place it's not, but just be mindful of what you're doing. Again, at the end of the day, it is alcohol. So um, you don't want to jeopardize your business by any means. Um, another big thing that we're noticing, and this has been very important that Sarah wanted us to get out there, is you cannot make any kind of medical claims with our wine. Um, saying that we, have wines that you come and you try, you're not gonna have a headache. That's making a medical claim. So we need to be careful about what we're putting out there, especially, you know, you don't wanna get caught where you say, you're not gonna have a headache. Someone comes to your party and they call you the next day and they said, I had a headache. I mean, there's thousands of reasons why people get headaches in the morning. Um, and you just don't wanna to have to be stuck in that situation trying to backpedal your way out of that conversation. So we can't make any medical claims. There is an FAQ in your back seller. If you go under the branded marketing page, under your social images, there's gonna be an FAQ wellness, and that's gonna guide you as to what you can say. So make sure you're checking that out. Um, it talks about you know, <coughs> ketogenic friendly, can diabetics have our wines? So make sure you are navigating through that back seller. There's so many things and so many tools there that you can answer yourself. So make sure you're looking for that. And if you have a question where you don't understand or you have you know, just something that you wanna ask, look to your um, group page first. You can go to the search at the top and just put in a subject. I guarantee that question's been asked and you can find the answer. And if not, then you can reach to your upline. But what I am noticing is when we had our opportunity tasting last night and just talking to other leaders, there's a lot of people that are on your team that just really don't understand very much about the business. So we have to make sure we're leading our team and for them to be successful and to have a win at the end of the month. Um, speaking of win at, at the end of the month, when you sign somebody up, be sure you're teaching them about the Fast Start program. That is the duplicating system that corporate has given us that is going to jumpstart us into how we're gonna grow our business which means getting sales every month and by month three, you're recruiting somebody. So Anne, if you have that, can you screen share very quickly what that fast start is? Um, if you were able to, were you able to download that? Did she, she could put her kids to bed. <laughs> Make sure you unmute yourself, Anne. Can you see her? Anne? She's working on it. Unmute yourself. There you sorry, go. I'm sorry, I'm working on it. I'm pulling it up for you. Uh, okay, so when you pull it up, just go ahead and do a screen share. We'll talk about that. But I'm seeing people who are in their fast start month and they are just dollars away from getting free wine. Um, we need to make sure we give them a victory at the end of the month. And then just reaching a fast start bonus and getting wine at the end of the month is a victory for them. It's going to inspire them to, to grow and to continue to, um, to work towards the next month and to work towards that goal. That I've gotten so many consultants that have contacted me and when I talk about the fast start and they do not even know what I'm talking about so let's make sure make a checklist when you have signed somebody up you know you've got your checklist of what you want them to do with the tastings with look at the back seller what the fast start is what a builder leg is and Anne's going to go into all of that with the comp plan 
Um, but, oh, Anne's gonna screen share real quick. Okay, so this, we've all seen this. This is your Fast Start program. It is being paid out in wine credits, but really look at that. So enrollment month, um, make sure on your enrollment month, I mean, even if it's today, and I know today's the end of the month, this is their enrollment month. And I would strike by the iron pot. I know we've got some people that say, well, I'll just wait until next week at the first of the month and sign somebody up. Have them start now. Um, I did tell a recruit the other day, if you don't make that first month, you are still eligible for all the other months. It's not an all or none situation. So if you don't make your enrollment month qualifications, you're still eligible for your first full month qualifications. It's not an all or none situation. But I've got some people who says, well, I'm gonna wait and sign her up until the first of the month to give her that first full month as, as her enrollment. Um, and I see people that you lose people. As um, we've all learned that first 72 hours of signing somebody up is very critical when they wanna sign up for the business. So if you let that 72 hours go by, you're probably gonna lose them. So make sure that it doesn't matter the month. Um, we've got so many people that signed up today and it's the very last day of the month. I know the Founders Club was a big push for that. Um, but again, really look at your team every single month. See who is in their fast start month and make sure that you are guiding them as to where they need to be. And that way they can get a victory at the end of the month. Um, speaking of kind of all of that, we wanted to make sure we were talking that, um, and you can unscreen share if you want. We were talking earlier about um, making sure you have, I'm gonna make this quick, making sure you have inventory in your home. I see so many zeros of people that are not even purchasing their own wine. And as a business owner, if I don't have my product on hand, I, that's, that says that I don't really care about my product. If you come to my house at any given time, I will at least have five to 10 bottles of wine. And the reason is, is I may have somebody come over tonight and I wanna share a bottle of wine. Tomorrow we're going to have dinner, it's a BYOB, I'm bringing some wine. We're gonna to go to a friend's house, I'm bringing wine. It's someone's birthday, I'm bringing wine. That is your marketing, your best marketing tool that you have is a bottle of wine. Or someone says, hey, I've got some girls coming over tomorrow, some girlfriends, can you do an impromptu wine tasting? The worst thing to say is, I don't have any wine. That just speaks volumes about your business. So if you're sitting at zero every month, that just tells me that you're not engaged back in the business. So get engaged in the business, buy your wine, join the wine club. If that's the easiest way for you to do that, get the four, six, 12 bottle wine club, whatever, whatever it is and have it automatically come to your home. So you're always prepared for a tasting. You're always prepared for a visitor and you're always prepared to gift a bottle of wine. So that's all I'm going to say about that. But everybody go in your pantry. If you don't have wine, get on the site, order some wine. So, okay, so I'm going to turn it over to Lisa now because I know that we've got um, a lot of people that are talking about how do I grow my team? How do I motivate my team? You know, how do I take rejection? So um, if you have any questions about what we've talked about, you could put it in the chat. There's a little chat at the bottom. Go ahead and click on that if you've got a question and we'll try to answer those questions as we go. Okay, Lisa, I'm turning it over to you. Okay. Um, so once you get your business up and running, you realize pretty quickly that in order for us to make the kind of money that most of us want to make, you have to build a team under you. And this honestly, I think is what is the biggest challenge with most consultants. And they're like, how do I build a team? So before I touch on how we recruit, I want to kind of go over some statistics that were shared with me. Um, that was actually pretty eye opening. Um, so what they said was, Let's say, for example, that you recruit 20 people over the course of the next six months. Um, they're saying that 12 of those 20 will actually be doing something with the business within 90 days. Eight of those people will still be working the business within a year. Four of those people will be working the business within two years and two people will be working the business within three to five years. This actually spoke volumes to me and was pretty eye-opening. And the minute I heard these statistics, I thought to myself, I am gonna be one of the two that is working this business within three to five years. That is just gonna be my goal. We all realize that within MLM and direct sales, there is gonna be ups and downs. But if you stick with this, there is going to be a reward. Um, 
So basically, how do we build a team? I think that's the biggest question that we all get. Um, and the first thing that I can advise you to do is everybody go out and get a notebook of some kind. And the first thing that you need to do is you need to sit down and you need to create a list. Um, this list needs to be big and this list needs to be long. This list needs to include everyone that you've ever met. Um, you need to start back with your kindergarten graduation. Who was standing beside you in your picture? Um, who was on the fourth grade softball team with you? Who was on your, in your, who was a sorority sister with you? Who was your college roommate? Who was on your wedding list? Um, your guest list at your wedding? Um, who are your neighbors, your, your hairstylist, and your dentist? Make a list of everybody that you know. Um, also think about people that you know that have a large network of people. That could be a really good person for you to add to your list. Um, maybe they aren't interested in the business, but maybe they know somebody that is. That actually was a recruit for me last month. Um, I reached out to somebody that says, you know what? This really isn't for me right now, but I know somebody who is looking for an opportunity like this. I've also heard never remove somebody from your list unless they join or unless they die, which seems pretty severe, but there's a reason behind this. They are really encouraging you to increase your network. Join the neighborhood bunco team. Um, I just moved into a new house three months ago and somebody came to knock on my door and said, we would love to highlight your family in the neighborhood newsletter. Well, normally I would shy away from something like this, but I do realize this opens up a whole new network of people to me and I can actually highlight this, my scout and seller business. Um, so never shy away from any kind of exposure that somebody is going to hand you. Um, join a new Bible study, change gyms or try a new gym. Um, I had a, a, a friend in another MLM say she goes and she sits in a Starbucks, not from like 7 to 9 a.m. when it's the Starbucks rush, when everybody's trying to get their coffee and move on to their nine to five job. She said she actually goes and sits in a Starbucks when you've got the stay at home moms and the people that don't necessarily have to be somewhere. And she works really hard on forming relationships. She said that building relationships is the key to building your business. Um, we're really lucky now that we have social media. Social media is the greatest tool that we should all be utilizing. We should be posting several times a week on numerous social media outlets. I'm talking Twitter, Instagram, Facebook. Um, when I'm opening a bottle of wine on a Friday night, if I'm trying a new wine, I'm going to put it on my Insta story. You don't know how many people have reached out to me on my Insta story like, hey, I'd love to try that. Or, hey, tell me more. I'm interested in this business. You really don't, under, don't know how many people are watching. Um, there are also apps that can connect people and opportunity. There's one that's called Shaper. I haven't looked into it. It's something that I have on my list. But it's just, again, it's extending that network of people beyond, you know, your day-to-day -day life. Um, they really encourage us to post not only about your business, but ones that show people what this opportunity has brought to you. You being on family, on, on vacation with your family, um, being, being able to step away from your nine to five job and spend more time with your kids. Um, also encouraging, encouraging you to post pictures of you having fun with your business. Um, I know Shelly and I did a, a uh, Facebook Live the other day when we were at the winery, we were picking up our wine or doing a Facebook Live at your tastings, taking pictures of people having fun. Um, also, we've realized that Facebook does have an algorithm. So be sure to try to get on just once or twice a day and when you're looking at your feed, make sure that you're commenting and liking on certain pictures because then that bumps your post to the very top. <clears throat> um, cold calls and reach outs. They really are saying with network marketing and direct sales that there is nothing wrong with reaching out to people that you have not talked to for years. Um, they suggest that you reach out to them even, you know, Facebook Messenger. 
compliment them about something that in their personal life that you've seen on Facebook, go right into saying, and there's nothing wrong with this, and even though I've hesitated, they're saying that this actually has been shown to be successful with recruiting, saying, I have an opportunity that I'd love to share with you. Um, I've been thinking about you and how you'd be a perfect fit for this. But the key when you're doing these cold calls and reaching out to people is to keeping it short. And I have to say that, I mean, I'm guilty of, they call it vomiting, just like saying too much about the business and what this opportunity has brought to you. Keep it very short and keep it very simple. Um, they really say don't talk about the product too much and how much money you make and what this has done for you. They really suggest that you just tell your story. And you get really good at telling your story, keeping it like 60 seconds or less. <clears throat> Practicing your why and being sure that, that, it's short, that it's short and to the point is key. Um, always remember that your prospect has to like and has to trust you. And at any point, we do not want to appear desperate. So I did ask a question to... Um, someone recently who was high up in a, in a direct sales company. And I said, what if somebody has reached out to you and expressed interest in the company and into the business? And then all of a sudden they've gone dark. Like at what point do you know to just kind of take a step back? And her advice to me was never, we never want to appear desperate. You never want to overreach out to someone um, because they say that on average, it takes someone from seven to 12 exposures for them to commit to any opportunity. Um, and we also have to remember that we can't be afraid of hearing the word no. When we do these reach out and, and these cold calls, um, we have to be prepared to hear the word no. And if we're not hearing the word no, that just means one thing. And it means that we really aren't working hard enough. So we really have to be patient with our reach outs. Um, and before I finish, there's a couple things that I want everybody to think about. There's, there's been some, some quotes that I've read about and then I've heard from other people in direct sales companies that on a day-to-day -day basis, I try to like play through my mind because I have to say I am one of those people that doesn't want to overexpose or post too much or talk too much about the business because none of us wants to be the crazy wine lady that people avoid at the soccer game or in the football stands. And so there's been a couple things that I, I try to remember. And the first quote is, you've got what it takes, but this is going to take everything that you've got. Um, getting comfortable, I think Shelly told me this one, getting comfortable with being uncomfortable. And that plays in my mind all the time. I mean, Shelly is always encouraging me to do Facebook Lives, and as hard as it is, I do know that it's important. We did one yesterday at the cellar, and I hated every single second of that Facebook Live, but you're connecting with people, and they like that. They like to see you having fun, and you're out, and you're enjoying what you're doing. Um, and the last one that I'm going to say, and I think, Shelly, didn't you do a Facebook challenge? You did a homework assignment, I think, last night at the one-year anniversary. She really encouraged everybody on her team to get put themselves out there and to do a Facebook Live. The first one's going to be awful. And do not go back and watch yourself because you probably will not do a second. Don't look at it. Don't watch it. Um, but it really is important. It's just, it's. It's more personal than just a Facebook post, and people want to see that you're enjoying what you're doing. Um, and then the last one that I want to say, and this one is, is actually pretty entertaining, somebody posed a question. They said, if you knew that there were several bars of gold that were buried in your backyard, how long would you dig before you got to them? And Shelly and I discussed this today. We'd invite the whole neighborhood over to dig with us. We would never give up. We would never stop digging until we found that those bars of gold. And basically that's what this opportunity is for all of us. We're gonna get there. It's gonna take a lot of hard work. And I try to remind myself that this is a marathon. This is not a race. Everybody's gonna go at their own pace, but eventually we're all gonna get there. And then the last thing I'm gonna say before I hand it over to Anne is, 
you've got to go to YouTube. I've told both my sisters, you have to watch this video. You need to search up, um, <laughs> I feel so silly saying this, but it's called, <laughs> it's called Crazy Nasty Ass Honey Badger. And it kind of goes along with what I just said. There's some bars of gold that are buried in your backyard. What are you gonna do to get to those bars of gold? And this honey badger, like, that's who I strive to be on some level. And it's pretty entertaining, I have to say. But go, go search it up because it's like a three minute video. But I think we should all strive to be the honey badgers and scout and seller and dig, dig, dig till we finally get to where we're trying to be. That's all I have. All right. Thank you, Lisa. Um, okay, so what we're going to go into now is I'm going to go into the compensation plan. I'm going to break this up into the basic comp plan, and then we'll have advanced training after that. Um, and so if you want to hop off after um, I finish the basic and you don't want to hear the advanced stuff, this call will be recorded. Um, but at the end of it, I'll take questions. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to do a quick screen share. And there's a PowerPoint presentation that we're going to go over. So for you. Perfect. Okay. So this is a compensation plan that I um, made, and that's just to kind of get the gist of what our um, what our plan is for Scout and Seller. So when you go to Back Seller and you type in, or I'm sorry, you go into uh, the comp plan, this is what you're actually going to pull up. So you have your personal sales up here. You have your team commissions. This is how you get paid on all of your downline. Then you have your leadership reward. So all of these are one column. So you can see how it kind of goes, follows all the way down. Then you have the little group bonuses. Um, you have the executive manager group bonus, and then you have the generational bonuses. And then you have the, um, the personal uh, sample credit bonuses on here as well. So that is in back seller. So moving on to personal sales. So this is how everybody gets paid just off of the wine you either buy yourself or the wine that you personally sell. So everyone starts out at 12%. So from $1 to $4.99, you make 12% off of the entire amount. So you sell $30, you sell 12%. Um, when you go up to $500, uh, up to $14.99, you bump up to the next tier, which is 15%. So if you sell $550, you make 15% off of the entire amount. Um, the next tier is $1,500 to uh, $299. That bumps you up to 20%. And then anything over $3,000, you make 25%. So if you are at $295, it is advantageous to you to uh, spend a little bit of money to bump you up to that next 25% uh, tier. Um, everyone starts out at 12%. Under your compensation tab, you'll see something that will say retail bonus. So everyone starts at that 12%. You'll see a 3% retail bonus. Let me actually move y'all over. You'll see a 3% retail bonus, um, and that's whenever you hit 15%. So if you are at 12% and you see something that says you got a 3% retail bonus, that means you are bumped up to that 15% tier because 12 plus 3 is 15. If you see something that says 8% retail bonus, that means you are bumped up to that 20% because 12 plus 8 is 20. And then so on for 13%, you have been bumped up to that uh, highest tier, which is 25%. This is dollar for dollar. So again, if you, if you um, sell $250, you would make uh, that 12% off of the entire $250. Any questions about personal sales? Perfect. Moving on. Um, the next thing that we're going to go into is the downline. Let me move you over here so I can see what I'm I'm sorry. Um, downline. So um, each month you will start over as a consultant for your paid as title. You have two different titles. You have your career title and then you have your paid as title. If you don't sell any wine, that means you don't make any money. So pretty easy. Um, you must have the downline sales, the consultant structure, and the personal sales to reach title every single month. So there are three different um, requirements downline sales, consultant structure, and personal sales, okay? All downline sales are paid at 70% of the total sales, not including tax and shipping. Why is it paid at 70%? 
because 30% is the company's operating cost. Okay, so whenever you are looking at your personal sales, it's 100%, but when you're looking at your downline sales, just know that it is set. You have to multiply it times 0.7, which is 70% of it. Moving on, what are levels? Levels are the people that you sponsor and the people that they sponsor below them. So here's an example. Shelly signs up Ann, Lisa, and Brittany. And then Ann signs up Patricia and Tressie. And then Patricia signs up Mary. So in this scenario, Shelly, who was at the very top, she had three level ones that she signed up. Lisa, Ann, and Brittany. And Shelly has two level twos, which are Patricia and Tressie. And that's because Ann signed them up. And then she has one level three, which would be Mary, and that's because Patricia signed up Mary. Any questions on what levels are? Perfect, moving on. Senior consultant, this is the very first title that you, um, that you can get. A senior consultant, this means that you actually have consultants underneath you, you have a team, so you have people that you have personally sponsored. You might have the personal sales to qualify for senior consultant, but you will not get paid as a senior consultant unless you have somebody beneath you to get paid on, okay? So you must personally sell $200 to be a senior consultant. And your downline, which includes your own personal sales, has to equal $500, okay? In this scenario, if you are a senior consultant, you would then make 3% on your level ones, on all of your level ones. And again, that is always paid at 70%. So let's get Shelly, her personal sales are $200, okay? And then Ann sells $200 and Lisa sells $100. If you add all of this up, that equals $500. So in this scenario, Shelly would be a senior consultant, okay? How did I get that? You have 200, which is Shelly's. You have 200, which is Ann's. You have 100, which is Lisa's. That equals 500. So in this scenario, Shelly would make the $200 times her 12% for personal commissions, which would be $24. On her level ones, which would be Ann's plus Lisa's, so that $300 um, below her, you would take $300 times that 0.7, because it's 70%, and it would be $210 times the 0 0.03, Shelly would make $6.30. So total for this month, she would make $30.30. And again, I'm always gonna use very, very small numbers whenever I explain this. Um, and the reason for that is because I want to, uh, I don't wanna make it confusing. So I don't wanna put, Sally, Shelly sold $5,000 and Ann sold $2,000. That just makes it very confusing. So the purpose of this is to break it down so everyone can understand the comp plan. Executive consultant is the next title. You must personally sell $300, and your downline, which obviously includes your own personal sales, uh, must equal $800. In this scenario, you that now bump up to 5% that you make on your level ones. Again, these are the people that you personally sponsor, and that payout is always at 70%. So an example, Shelly's personal sales is $300. Ann sells $300, and Lisa, who had a good month, she sold $500. So Shelly's total downline is 300 plus 300 plus 500. Her total downline is $1,100. Shelly would make her $300 on her personal sales. So multiply that times 12%. She's at that first tier. She makes $36 on her personal sales. And then on her levels, you add them all up. You multiply them times that 70%. Then you multiply it times the percentage, which is 5%. She then makes $28. You add them all up, her personal sales plus her downline sales. She now makes $64 on her, uh, for her monthly commission. Again, I'm using small numbers so everyone can understand. Your question. Shelly or Lisa, if you see a question, will you stop me? Because I'm screen sharing. It's hard to, it's hard to see it. Um, now a builder leg. This is where everyone really needs to start kind of um, understanding the comp plan. A builder leg is a person or a team below you 
that has at least one active consultant and collectively sell $600, okay? So you must have one person on there who has at least sold $200. But altogether, that magic number is 600, okay? So 600 is a magic number. So here's an example. We're gonna use Shelly's team. So you have Shelly, she sponsored two people, Ann and Lisa. Ann sold 200, Ann sponsored two people, Patricia sold 200, and Tressie sold 200. So two, four, six. We have collectively sold $600, and we have at least one person in here who has sold $200. We are considered a builder leg. Now you go to Lisa. Lisa doesn't have anyone that she has sponsored yet, but she has sold $600 personally, so she would qualify as a builder leg as well. So in this scenario, Michelle has two builder legs, Ann and Lisa. Any questions on what a builder leg is? Perfect, moving on. Associate manager. So associate manager is, um, this is one of the big ones where you really need to start kind of, um, if you can understand associate manager, you can really understand the rest of the comp plan. So you must personally sell $400 to be considered an associate manager. Your downline sales, which obviously includes your own personal sales, must be $1,500. Okay, so everyone together. This is where the max downline rule applies. What this means is you can't have one giant leg doing everything. This forces you to spread the love out. So in, for the associate manager, you can have no more than $750 from one leg count towards title achievement or a title advancement. You would still get paid on everything, but you can only count half of it to get you to that title. Okay, and why do they do that? Again, they force you to continue to grow your business so you don't just have one monster leg. Again, you'll still get paid on everything appropriately, but you can only count half of it towards that, leg, uh, towards that uh, total downline sales. So with associate manager, you now bump up to 6% on your level ones, and then now you get paid on your level twos at 3%. Again, all of this is always paid at that 70% qualifying volume. And for an associate manager, you must have one builder leg. Okay, so let's go over all that again because that's, that, this is the hardest one to understand is associate manager. Personally sell $400. Your downline, which is everybody, needs to be at $1,500. You can't count more than $750 from one monster leg. Okay, so spread the love out. You now make 6% on your level ones, and then you also make 3% on your level twos, and you must have one builder leg, okay? So we're gonna move y'all over so I can show you what this is in this scenario. So here's the scenario, you have Shelly. She sold $400 personally. She has signed up two people, Ann and Lisa. Ann sold $700, Tressie sold $200, and Patricia sold $200, okay? And Lisa sold $500. In this scenario, she has met the personal sales check mark, okay? She also has the total downline check mark as well, because if you add all of this up, it equals, okay, my love. All of, if you add up all of this, it equals $2,000. And she also has one builder leg because Anne they equal at least $600, okay? And that max downline rule applies here as well. She could only pull $750 from this leg to count towards her, the total personal sales. I'm so sorry, one second. Um, yeah, so daddy will go get your jammies. Okay, go find your daddy. Daddy is kicking the shower. Okay, I'm so sorry, sit right there. Um, okay, so that is associate manager. Any questions on associate manager? Perfect, moving on. Senior manager. So senior manager, you must personally sell. It now bumps up to $500. Your max downline, which includes your own personal sales, must be $3,000. So your, everyone must sell 3,000 as a group. For your max downline rule, it's always half of it. So you can't count more than $1,500 from one monster leg. 
Okay, so that forces you to grow your team. You now increase, you make 7% on all of your level ones and 5% on your level twos. To qualify for senior manager, you must also have two builder legs. Again, $600 is a magic number for a builder leg. So let's look at this scenario. Shelly has sold $500 personally, so she's checked off that personal, uh, that personal uh, commission uh, book, checkbox. She also has to have, uh, if you add all of these up, it equals $3,300, so she is also qualified for the downline sales. She doesn't have more than $1,500 coming from one monster leg, okay? And if you add all of this up, and she also has two builder legs, because Anne, they have all sold one, they have all sold $600, and Lisa, they have all sold $600. So Shelly would be paid as a senior manager. In this scenario, you take Shelly's personal sales times the 15%, because now she gets paid 15% on her personal sales because she sold over 500, she sold $500. You add up all of her level one, which are Anne and Lisa, that equals 1,200. You do 1,200 times 70%, and then you do that 70% times 0 0.07, because she makes 7% on all of her level ones. She makes $58.80 on her level ones. Do the same thing for her level twos. It comes out to $56. You add all of this up, 75 plus 58 plus 56 equals $189 on, uh, for the commissions. Again, I'm always using small numbers just so everyone can understand concepts. Moving on. Executive manager. So this is the very first big title that everybody is really trying to get. People will call it a couple different things. They'll call it executive manager, EM, or M3, okay? But really, we call it EM now. Um, but if they're older in the company, they might call it M3. The reason why they call it M3 is because you're managing three legs, but executive manager, EM. So. To be an executive manager, you need to have a total downline sales of $6,000 and personal sales of $600, okay? Then you must also have three builder legs, okay? And max downline rule is always 50%. You can't count more than $3,000 from one monster leg. So let's look at this scenario. Shelly has met the personal sales checkbox. She sold $600. She has three level ones who have all started building teams. Anne, they are a builder leg. Lisa, they are a builder leg. And Priscilla, they are a builder leg. So in this scenario, Shelly qualifies for executive manager. The very first time Shelly hits executive manager, she will get a $500 bonus. She will get a $500 bonus and the person who sponsored her will also get a $500 bonus. So in this scenario, Shelly's paycheck, her personal sales, plus her level ones, plus her level twos, plus her $500 bonus, she would make $842 on this paycheck. Does anyone have any questions about executive manager? Perfect. So that ends the comp plan for the basic compensation training. Um, I'm now going to go into the advanced compensation training, and this is for our director levels and above. You are more than welcome to stay on and listen, um, but if you want to hop off, you can totally hop off. This call will be recorded. So I'm now going to go into associate director. Associate director, you have to have $600 in personal sales. Your downline must be $12,000. The max downline rule is always 50%. You can't count more than $6,000 from one monster leg. You have to have at least three level ones. Two of them have to be builder legs, and that other person must be one, must be an M3. That M3 can come from anywhere on that person's downline. It does not have to be someone you personally sponsor. Okay, so let's say that again. You have to have at least three people that you've sponsored. Two of them are builder legs, and on that other leg, there must be a M3, or an executive manager, on that leg, okay? Once you have an M3 in your downline, they become your generation one, okay? This is where generations start. So M3, or executive manager, they always just consider them a generation. 
okay? So generation one. You would take your generation one, their entire downline, so everybody who is uh, below them indefinitely down, till there is another executive manager to break them up, you would make 2% on that entire, I'm sorry, um, I'm so sorry. <clears throat> you would make 2% on that generation. Okay, so that is your generation one bonus. Any questions on what a generation is? Shelly, Lisa, if, if there is any questions can or anyone commenting, will you let me know? Unmute yourself and let me know. Okay, moving on. Director. For a director, it is $600 in personal sales. Your max downline, or I'm sorry, your downline must be $25,000. So max downline rule is 50%. You can only count 50% from one monster leg. You now have three legs total. You have one of them must be a builder leg, and you must have now two EMs or two M3s from different legs, okay? Now you will capture on your generation two. So this is, this is, let's give an example. So remember, generations are M3s. So for a generation one is an M3, for a generation two would be an M3 underneath your generation one. So these are, gener these are M3s stacked on top of each other. Let's say Anne, Patricia, and Tressie are all M3s. Okay, again, this is, we're using Shelly's downline. Anne, it, because she personally sponsored, Shelly personally sponsored Anne, she is generation one. Anne brought on two people. She brought on Patricia and Tressie. Patricia is Shelly's generation two, and Tressie is Shelly's generation two. Okay, they are all underneath me, but they both became M3, so they become different generations for her. Think of it as, vines or um, uh, wine, wine vines. So every time you have a generation, it's another group of grapes that kind of break off and they start growing that way. You take that entire downline sales of generation one. So Shelly would take all of Anne's entire downline minus she would pull out Tressie's and Patricia's and then Shelly would get her generation one bonus, which would be um, uh, two and a half percent, and then she would get a generation two bonus, which is two percent, and this is for director. So Shelly would make two and a half percent off of everybody below Ann indefinitely down, but she would have to pull out all of Patricia's people and all of Trussie's people, and then those would be separate bonuses. Okay, here's another little example Ann's downline for Shelly is forty thousand dollars. Of that 40,000, Patricia is 15,000, and Tressie is 15,000. So you have Anne's downline, you subtract Patricia's, and you subtract Tressie's, there's now $10,000 left in that generation. That is Shelly's generation one bonus. You would take that 10,000, always multiply it times that 0.7 for that 70%, and then you would multiply it by that 2.5. For her generation two, what Shelly would do, she would take that 30,000 because you take Patricia's 15,000 and Tressie's 15,000, multiply it times that 70% and then multiply uh, times that pot by that 2% and that is her generation two bonus. And this repeats for every single leg that Shelly has. So if she has sponsored 15 level ones and all of them start to pr produce uh, executive managers, you can see where the generations start to get really, really large. Senior director. A senior director must sell $600 um, in personal sales. Their downline must be uh, $60,000. The max downline rule, you can't pull more than $30,000 from one monster leg. So you now have to have three M3s and they must all be from different legs, okay? So now you can capture on your generation three people. 
So let's say, again, using Shelly's downline, Anne, Patricia, and Tressie are all M3s. And Tressie, she sponsored Tara, who became an M3 as well. So Anne is Shelly's generation one. Patricia and Tressie are Shelly's generation two. And Tara, who is underneath Tressie, is Shelly's generation three. Again, generations are M3 stacked on top of each other. You take the entire downline sales of generation one. You have to pull out your, um, your generation twos. And then whatever's left over, you multiply it times uh, that point, that 70%. You now increase to 3% of your generation one, two and a half to your generation two, and you capture 2% on your generation three. Here's an example. Anne has a $100,000 downline. Patricia and Tressie of, of, of Anne's downline make, 40, make up $40,000, okay? And, Tra and Tara makes up $10,000 of Tressie's 40. So you take Anne's $100,000, you must subtract all of Patricia's downline and all of Tressie's downline, which obviously that's this, this downline includes Tara. There's $20,000 left over. Of that 20,000, that is Shelly's generation one. You take that 20,000 times 70% and you multiply it times 0 0.03. For her generation two, which is Patricia and Tressie, the reason why it's only 30,000 is because you have taken out Tara's 10,000. Multiply it times 70%, multiply it times your two and a half percent, and that is her generation two bonus. In her generation three, Tara does not have any executive director, or I'm sorry, um, executive managers underneath her. So you take $10,000 times that 70% times a 2%. And those are her generations. And this repeats for each leg. And then you have executive director. Uh, personal sales, which is actually uh, $700. I apologize. It's actually supposed to be $700. The downline must be $150,000. The max downline is you can't count more than 50%, which is $75,000 from one monster leg. You must have three associate directors, okay? So before it was just executive managers. Now this title has bumped you up to associate directors. Um, old school people will call this LDR1, ignore that. It is just associate directors. Again, all of these must be from different legs. All of your generations increase. You get a 3% on your generation one, a 3% on your generation two, and a three or 2.5% on your generation three. We have one more uh, title, which is a, a managing director. And we currently do not have any managing directors in the company. Um, but essentially the personal sales are $700. The, uh, the downline is 500,000. The max downline rule is 250. You must have three directors. All of this increases, so it goes 3%, 3%, 3%, and then the infinity bonus kicks in with executive director and with managing director. What is the infinity bonus? The infinity bonus is a half a percent off of your generation four indefinitely down. So generation four, five, six, seven, eight, that is your infinity bonus. It is a half a percent at executive director and that actually bumps up to 1% for managing director. That's where people are making stupid money. So that is essentially all of the comp plan. Let me stop my screen share. That is the compensation plan. Um, I know there was a lot of information on that. Um, that PowerPoint presentation that I made is actually posted on at Team Tipsy and on the family page. Um, if you want to go over it, um, if anyone has any questions, I am always here for you to answer comp plan training or comp uh, questions. Shelly is here, Lisa is here. We are all here to help you um, answer any questions um, that you have. Um, that wraps up our call. We are just at an hour, um, and we always try to want to keep these just under an hour. So thank you all so much for being on here. Again, if you have any questions, please always feel free to reach out to us, but I will stop the recording now and answer questions.